Welcome to Filled with His Love, Strengthening Attachment Relationships. So today, I'm quite excited about this particular um, topic today. It's called Charity Thinketh No Evil. Now, oftentimes we think about uh, evil thoughts being only sexual or hurting other people or something, but I've subtitled this one, How to Extinguish Negative Self-Talk. This, I think, is our main problem. We're all familiar with the scripture, let thy bowels also be full of charity towards all men and to the household of faith, and let virtue garnish thy thoughts unceasingly. Then shall thy confidence wax strong in the presence of God, and the doctrine of the priesthood shall distill upon thy soul as the dews from heaven. So the key is, I, I once heard a General authorities say he thought that this was perhaps one of the most difficult of all commandments to let virtue garnish our thoughts unceasingly. So let's see why that is, why he might have said that, or why that's such a difficult thing. Um, one psychologist, her name is Susan Whitborn, she points out that we hold internal conversations more or less continuously as we go through our day. Psychologists call these conversations self-talk, where you provide evaluations and opinions about what you are doing as you are doing it. You can think of self-talk as an inner voice. I like this. Somewhat like a sports announcer's commentary of a player's successes or failures on the field. So we kind of are our own kind of uh, commentator on our behavior and our attitudes and our feelings and our emotions, we kind of give ourselves feedback constantly, and we call this self-talk. Now, when my wife and I were mission leaders, we first noticed very obviously that our missionaries, many of our missionaries, had trouble with negative self-talk. We heard them say things negative toward each other and about themselves often, sometimes negative things about church members or church leaders uh, in their area that weren't doing what they thought they should do. Uh, lots of negative self-talk, particularly attacking themselves for not being as good a missionary as they hoped they were. So we did an exercise where my wife got a gas mask on and she would go around and say, have you heard anything negative? Have you heard these negative things recently about yourself or uh, do you have this problem of negative self-talk and they would say yeah I do have that and then she would blow this little extinguisher and blow it all out let's extinguish that she would say a study was done recently with college students and the researchers asked these students how much of your self-talk would you say is negative and how much is positive and what they found was quite interesting. Before the study, the students said, you know, I believe that most of my self-talk is positive. I usually try to build myself up, etc." Then they had them actually take a log of their self-talk over a period of time. And they found exactly the opposite. They found that 60%, 70% of the self-talk was negative, not positive. They categorized it into three categories. Feelings of inferiority. In other words, the students were constantly comparing themselves with other students and coming up short, feeling like the other person was better. We saw this in our mission field a lot. Someone would look at another missionary and say, oh, that missionary is so good, so much better than I am, etc." All kinds of inferiority self-talk. Uh, need for love and approval. Uh, they wish they had more uh, approval from others. This happened in the mission field, of course, when a companionship would not work very well. Uh, but it also happens with college students all the time. They worry about whether or not this person likes them. They're not texting them enough, etc. The third category was control seeking. So this is where students felt like hey, I give my ideas in a team meeting and nobody appreciates them. I, I don't have any control. I, I, I don't have any influence. I wish I had more. Lots of negative self-talk around that category. Now, if we look at the 
uh, broader field of negative self-talk, th this is what we come up with. Categories like filtering. This is where something happens to you and it, it has both positive and negative aspects to it, but you pull out only the negative things and kind of hit yourself with them. Another one is blaming yourself. So something goes wrong and it may not have been your fault, but you blame yourself anyway. Uh, blaming others. This is the locus of control problem that people have when they say, well, all the problems in my world are because of others doing wrong things. So they blame others. Another category is catastrophizing. This is where we make something that's negative into a total catastrophe. We, we blow it totally out of proportion and it causes us great psychological difficulty. Another category is magnifying or minimizing. So this is where someone says, okay, here, this is making the mountain out of a molehill, uh, magnifying or making the molehill out of a mountain. <laughs> so that's minimizing. So we take a, a really important event and minimize its importance, or we take an unimportant event and magnify its importance and then bring all those negative things toward us, uh, causing us again mental difficulty. Uh, perfectionism, very common. We, we never measure up to our own standard. We never can reach what we want to reach. So this is another negative self-talk problem. Polarizing is where we see everything is black and white. Everything is good or bad. Everything is really extremely positive or extremely negative. This is polarizing things and this causes also lots of negative self-talk. Now, what the important part of this is these categories, these types of negative self-talk all influence relationships. So if you look at filtering, for example, if sometime you have an interaction with someone and it's positive and negative, but you bring on yourself, you filter out all the positive and you just hammer yourself with the negative things that happen. Uh, you blame yourself, that hurts the relationship because then you are shaming yourself, uh, you feel bad, this damages the relationship. You blame others, obviously this really is a clear indicator of hurting a relationship. You catastrophize, you make something a catastrophe that really isn't, you blow up, for example, you get all angry, at someone, this of course hurts the relationship. Magnifying, minimizing, again, the same kind of thing. You are magnifying something that is not very important and you have an interaction, for example, with your wife, with your husband, and it wasn't a great interaction, but you blow it out of proportion and then you hammer yourself for how badly you did in that interaction. Perfectionism, of course, is very difficult in relationships. When we get on ourselves for not being up to our own standard, uh, it makes us less effective and less able actually to show love uh, to someone else when we are constantly uh, being down on ourselves, polarizing the same thing. When our partner does something good or bad and we kind of say this is um, more than we actually experience. In other words, we say this is extremely bad, extremely good, and there's only two ways to look at this, and there's no other way of looking at it. Then we damage relationships as well, when we ought to be finding new ways to come together. So the big thing is how can we eliminate negative self-talk because it goes on and on. I, I would challenge you to just think about your own negative self-talk and see if you could uh, document how much negative self-talk happens to you when you kind of become conscious of it, it can have an effect on your well-being. So, okay, first thing is we need to reframe our thoughts. They call it cognitive reframing. So when something happens to us, some conversation or an event, we can reframe it from a negative one into a positive one. In other words, when we have this negative self-talk, we can turn that negative self-talk into positive self-talk, kind of talking our way out of being negative. Here are just a few examples. So, 
you can kind of challenge your thoughts. You say, when you might say, I'm, I just never do anything right. Well, you can also say, that isn't true. I do get things right. I feel like doing X, so I should do it right now. I can take time. You can reframe that and say, I can take time to process my thoughts without reacting first. You might also say, I have no control over my reactions. And you take that negative thought, you reframe it, and you say, I can learn to control how I react. You can say, my emotions are who I am. And so, in other words, my emotions control me. Or you can reframe that and say, my emotions are my brain processing information, and I can control that because I can think through it. You say, everything will end badly. You have this, this doomsville kind of feeling. And then you say, well, actually, what if things did work out? I can do that. Reframe it. All I do is mess up. Or you could say, what would my friends tell me to do? Let's pursue that. Sometimes we have what ifs. We kind of um, project into the future and say, what if this happened? What if that? You say, what if I fail? We could also, that if that happens, you know, you say, I don't want to try this because what if I fail? So I don't want to try it. But then you can say, well, what if I excel? What if I actually succeed? You reframe it. What if I go and have a terrible time to this event? Or you can say, what if I actually have a good time? What if it really makes me happy to do this? Reframe it. What if none of this is worth it? All this stuff you're spending time on and you say, probably this is not worth anything. Or you could say, what if I can create my own purpose? You reframe. What if they'll hate me? What if they don't like me? You reframe it. What if maybe they become my new friends? What if I'll never be good enough? This can happen a lot to us. We say, well, I, I just don't feel like I'm good enough. Again, this perfectionism thing. And then you can say, well, what if I already am good enough and I just want to try to get better? Uh, you reframe it. What if I never achieve this goal? You say to yourself. Or you could reframe it and say, what if I'm trying my best and my best is good enough? I think you get the picture. We can talk ourselves out of negative self-talk by reframing our thoughts. We just had a granddaughter return from Sweden from her mission. And in our family chat online, we asked each of the cousins if they had any questions for her. One, one cousin said, well, what was your favorite scripture on your mission? She immediately said, oh, it was actually a family scripture. And it was one that Grandma Sedgwick, Lola Hansen Sedgwick, was um, one that used this scripture all the time. She would come into a room and she was quite a dramatic person. She would say, look unto me and every thought, doubt not, fear not. She was quite uh, a dramatic soul and marvelous human being. And that scripture has stuck in our family. And look unto me and every thought, doubt not, fear not. And that was a scripture that our granddaughter used constantly on her mission. Now, I've thought about this in relation to our topic today, about charity suffereth long, and charity thinketh no evil. When we look to him, we feel his love. So look unto me in every thought. So these are the thoughts. If we're looking unto him in our thoughts, obviously they are going to be virtuous. But the power of this is when we look unto him, the more we look unto him, the more we feel his love. And the more we are filled with his love, the more virtue will garnish our thoughts. I'd actually not thought of this before, this uh, doing this podcast today, but when you look at that scripture, let thy bowels also be full of charity towards all men and towards the household of faith, and let virtue garnish thy thoughts unceasingly. It starts with let your heart, let your soul, let your whole being be filled with God's love. When your whole being is filled with God's love, then your thoughts, of course, will be virtuous. 
You're not going to be blaming yourself. You're not going to be blaming others. You're not going to be catastrophizing, filtering, uh, polarizing, all those things. Being a perfectionist, we're in a sense going to think of President Nelson's injunction that perfection is pending. Perfection does not happen in this life. So don't be so hard on yourself. Be self-forgiving. So the more we are filled with his love, the more virtue, virtue will garnish our thoughts. And that means that we will, of course, think no evil. No evil of ourselves and no evil of others. We will be close to him. He will help us. I know that. I hope you'll look at your own self-talk. Some people call it mental chatter this week and think about how you might be able to reframe and come closer to him and be filled with his love. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.